Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, fellow patriots. You're listening to The Kevin Jackson Show on KJRadio.com. I'm Liz Matori, your guest host, and thank you again for sticking in with us. Yes, so we're talking about agenda. We're talking about the left. They're talking about whoever you want to call it. Um, They're all these different events that we're seeing, whether it's mass shootings or whatever they want to call them, um, even, I would argue, the DACA situation or the illegal, unlawful entrance um, events, are honestly to craft or, I guess, take away from the rights of the citizens. Um, and I wanted to kind of share with you um, for a moment um, some precedent. Um, I also work in public relations. Um, I um, have my MA from Maryland, and we study. I don't. I hate to say that it all boils down to marketing, but marketing has a lot to do with what we are witnessing um, out there um, in the hinterlands. Um, so, if you want to read books, if you want to get more of the sort of the source of it all. Um, definitely recommend three specific books to kind of get a sense of context. Um, The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind by uh, Gustave Le Bon, Um, Crystallizing Public Opinion by Edward Bernays, and Propaganda, also by Edward Bernays. And again, when you break down the difference between, I guess, the rest of us and them, conservatives believe in the power of the individual. The other folks believe in the power of the government or the group. It's very hard. Think about your group of friends. Um, back in the day, when before you actually had friends that had diverse opinions, and instead of having, you know, what we have now is just everybody thinks the same thing, and we all have to be mindful of it. Um, right, so when you have a group of friends or your family, and, um, you know, everybody has their own different opinions, they're all individuals, everybody has, you know, their own personalities, this, that, and the other decision-making is difficult. You know, there might be some similarities. Some people might want Chinese food. Some people might want Italian, but everybody has their own opinion as to what sort of food they want to eat for dinner. You have to have a conversation. You got to weigh the principles. You got to weigh the price, all these different things. Eventually, that group of people are going to make a decision after sharing their difference of opinion. Or they won't. Maybe they'll order from different places, what have you. But If you are going to try to get that group of people, even though they are individuals, to make a decision almost immediately without thinking, you have to cut them away from being individuals and shift them into a group. Because ultimately, your goal is to control their opinion. You want to control their activity. So that's what we're watching. I mean, at the end of the day, you are witnessing real time the manipulation of society. And I think, um, in my opinion, um, everything's happening in breakneck speed because the more that our president and other people like him are looking under under the mattress, if you will, or under the rug or whatever, looking for, you know, in scrutinizing um, what has happened, um, I do believe that um, they don't want us to find out what they've been doing. And so in order for us to be distracted, the classic is divide and conquer, right? And how do you, again, divide folks um, in a way to control them? Um, One of the classic examples of how people bond is usually through religion or culture. But um, because Western civilization has developed in a way, there's a lot of, um, again, like um, continuity there. We've developed in a way to have certain principles um, over the last, I don't know, millennia, if you will. Uh, But the, if you notice the rapid sort of degradation of our relationship to religion and or God, um, I would argue that these two things are happening at once. It is easier to manipulate people if they don't have a good foundation. Um, you know, I was raised Catholic. I mean, obviously, Lord knows the Catholic Church has had 
our fair share of issues, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, you have a certain set of principles and you live by them and you try to live by them, but you have a context. But if you don't have any context whatsoever, and not only that, you only believe in this world or this life and you only think that man or humans or men are in control and therefore are solely responsible, you end up doing things or believing things that um, you don't have a conscience. You know, everybody has a conscience, but and uh, but your values and your morals sort of craft and hone how you live your life, and not only how you live your life, but how you interact and interface with others. Um, a new sort of philosophy that I am learning about more so now than before is libertarianism. And I, I know this is a little tangent, but it is what it is. We'll get back to what we were talking about before. But libertarians are wonderful people. I don't know all of them, but I value the fact that they believe that certain people can, you know, do and say what they want and live how they want as long as they don't hurt anybody. But again, like if you don't have the same values and principles and standards that other people have, it is very hard to just live live free and flighty. Um, the other extreme is the leftist bit, where they don't think that individuals have the ability to control and, and constrain themselves and have a sense of responsibility. So instead of having that individual liberty and and control, they think that the government has to do it. So again, like the things that we have to remind our our fellow travelers that don't quite understand why we are conservatives now, um, push back on them and say, okay, do you want the individuals to figure this out for themselves in a, in a, in their own, in their own way, in their own ability? Or do you think that we're too dumb to figure it out ourselves and we need the government to do it? That is a huge bit of the agenda that they, you know, want us to be comfortable, um, losing our, our sense of selves. And, and, and again, like the more that they push this, I do believe that more of us are going to begin to wonder and question what we're seeing. As we all know, the, you know, the classic or the, uh, the traditional media sources are dwindling and just like anything, what, what bleeds, what le- it leads and what shock and awe, you know, that's why they, their industry is based on the suffering of others. Like how sick and sad is that? Like, think about it. Like what we're seeing now, I mean, we're sad that every day, every hour, and, and, and there's just something else going on. And you literally have to wonder, you have to, there has to be another source of, of um, might out there than, than man. You know, I mean, if we were to only depend on our own limitations, we would be lost. But again, like that's the cool thing about us conservatives is that we know that we're not in this by ourselves um, and that we have the ability to live out our, our lives by the grace of God and be able to figure out how we can, you know, navigate the world in a better way. The left doesn't have that. I mean, that's the freaky weird thing about it, you know. I know for a fact that my congressman is an atheist, and I know a lot of folks don't like to talk about religion or lack of religion, but I don't understand atheism, and that's, I have to admit to that. I don't understand how you can govern in a Judeo-Christian place without believing in the God that you, that most of the country believes in, Um, but then again, what does one do when one of the most powerful people and maybe several others um, in our government um, don't believe the values that you that most of the country believes in. What do we do about it then? Um, so yeah, so if you want to include in the agenda, part of the agenda is to take away from take us away from our belief in God. Um, that was another interesting moment where. Um, a lot of the um, Democrats that I was able to connect with um, before I left the party, they are concerned that in a place like Maryland, the Democrat Party has gotten so far left that they want they felt like the, they couldn't 
believe in God and be proud Christians and still be Democrats. Because the Democrats are forcing hyper-liberal, extremist, agenda-driven legislation, especially in a place like Maryland, outside the context of the most important um, sort of guide to one's life. And they'll say, oh, you know, separation of church and state. You know, I think that's like a bogey on that one because I feel like that is a way for them to take us from my own mark. Um, We'll take a little break now and we'll talk more about these agenda-driven events. And you'll let me know, like, let us know what you think about all these things. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. 